What's up you guys, we're back. We made a ton of progress on this wiring since the last video. Essentially what happened was just kind of went through all the different legs of this engine harness, pulled it out, anything that was not needed, stuff like to control the transmission or emissions stuff, different sensors that we're not gonna be using. And I've slimmed down the harness to just the bare essentials here. And what I've done right now is I'm starting to kind of route this or sneak this through the engine bay for how it's gonna end up laying with all the various different connection points and the routing. I'm trying to keep things as clean and as tight as possible, both for appearance, but also just for simplicity and if I do ever need to make any kind of repairs here or there. The other important step that's happening is to run this LS6 intake manifold. I actually have to do different injectors. It's a different connector than the truck manifold. So I've cut out the old truck style connectors gone ahead and spliced in solder, splice, shrink wrap, whatever, all the different connections for the new injectors. And while I've done that, I also went through and verified the pinouts to make sure that I've got the right uh, injector going to the right cylinder. So I've got these all numbered and these are ready to get plugged in as well. Last thing to do in the bay is to sort out this collection of pink wires. If you're familiar with an LS engine harness, Basically, all of the power for just about everything gets a pink wire. Uh, so things like the injectors, the coil packs, sensors, O2 sensors, uh, they all run through, or they all get powered through these pink wires right here. So basically, uh, just need to kind of combine and consolidate these, uh, get them different power lines running through the firewall, and into the engine bay where I've got the next project. If you remember last time we pulled all the chassis wiring from underneath the dash completely out of the car. So really there's, uh, there's zero wiring running through this chassis right now. So in order to power up the engine, power up the computers, control some of the other aspects of the car, I've kind of taken it upon myself to build a, a new wiring harness from scratch, a new chassis harness from scratch. And what that results in is this beauty right here. Real, real simple setup. I've got some relays, the fuses to power, everything that I need. Okay, a couple switches here. We've got ignition, fuel, fans, starter. And so that all fits real nicely right where the center console used to be. And at the end of the day, we've got a nice kill switch here that powers the entire car. I've got the two gauges, one for water temp, the other for oil pressure. And then alongside here, we've got our starter button, ignition, fuel, fans, and then the relays and the fuses to control everything. Believe it or not, this is everything I need to run and drive this car. Okay, so I think that does it for the recap, the updates as far as electrical goes. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start working on these pink wires. Okay, so despite this being the most exciting thing ever, uh, here's a quick little update. Essentially, we went from looking like this to over here, you can see a hell of a lot cleaner. We've got all the injector wires routed nicely, the looms all taped up and sorted, and it goes nicely kind of along the intake manifold here and down and underneath sensors. We've got the pink power wires all taken care of. They're routing through that little loom right there and then also through the firewall. But I have run out of electrical tape so I think that's going to do it for right now. Okay so that wasn't much of an outro so let me get you caught up here. I ended up getting some more electrical tape and finishing the engine bay harness or at least the full engine harness here. We've got everything wrapped up, organized, cleaned up, assigned, pinned out, and correctly placed in the engine bay, and it looks really, really good. You know, it's nice and tucked out of the way. Everything reaches where it should. I've got all the connectors connected, so really everything, at least around this area, should be good to go now. 
Uh, there's a couple other things left to button up on the engine, things like PCV hose routing, some, some cooling stuff, uh, and most importantly the exhaust, which we'll get to next time. But everything else, at least electrical wise, is good to go this side of the firewall. Moving inside the cabin though, it's a little bit of a different story. We've got all this wiring left to take care of, and I'm still working, or I've got the switch panel made up, uh, but what I need to do is then connect all of these to the various bits and pieces that they go to. So I've run the lines for like fuel pump, tail lights, brake lights, and I've got everything coming through the firewall to get inside the car. Uh, so now it's just a matter of making all the connections and running the maybe the more important power lines to the starter, alternator, uh, and then inside to the fuse panel here. So that should really wrap up everything electrical. So that's that's feeling good. If I had to go back, I don't know. I, I think I'm, I'm pretty pleased that we went with this full kind of chassis rewire instead of using the existing Nissan stuff. So I am, I'm happy we did it. It's been a lot of work, uh, but it has also been fun kind of figuring out how you know I would run these different circuits in my simplified schematic. So stay tuned, up next we're gonna tackle the exhaust, which uh, behind the scenes has not really been the best experience. So yeah, we'll dive into that next time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.